We're going to talk about decompression of the ulnar nerve through Guillain's canal and the carpal tunnel. The specific steps for each of these decompressions will be illustrated. And here you can see that we've organized a table of contents. Along the right hand side is the time code where you can find the various steps should you be interested in one particular aspect. The orientation is the left hand. I'm sitting in the axilla or along the ulnar border and the first step will be to open Guillain's canal. You can see that my incision is well ulnar to the thenar crease which I've documented here with little dots. So first step, open the incision and you can see that I've extended the incision above the wrist in order to release this fascia which can markedly compress the ulnar nerve and in the past when I haven't done that I really think I haven't done an adequate decompression. Look at how thick that fascia is. So we open up Guillain's canal, the muscle is divided, you can see the fat of Guillain's canal. Occasionally there will be a little cutaneous branch in the distal one-third of this incision coming off of the ulnar nerve, but it's definitely large enough to protect. Palmaris brevis muscles divided. So this is really the first step in a Guillain's canal release, and I'm going to go through all six of my steps. I'm looking in here to make sure that I don't have a cutaneous nerve and there it is right there. Sometimes I'll mark this with some blue ink just to make sure it stays focused in my mind as I'm going through. You can see as I pull on that cutaneous nerve there's a little tucking or pulling of the skin in the palm. I think if you cut that nerve that you get symptoms similar to pillar pain. Now I'm going to release that fascia that I talked about proximal to the wrist crease. My scissors are on the neurovascular bundle. You can see that below. And then look at how thick and significant this fascia is. There's several layers to it. You can lift the hand off the table. You can divide this with a knife or with scissors. And once you get the thickened fascia released, it's pretty obvious that the rest of that antibrachial fascia is not an issue. A modified Brunner is enough to get a good release here. The next step is to sweep the neurovascular bundle medially. So you don't think about anything in particular, you just move that whole neurovascular bundle medially. Small vessels are divided. Everything's moved medially. My next step is feel the hook of the hamate. And here I put an ink mark on where the hook of the hamate is. Now the next step is to look. What do I mean by that? Look at the fascia and muscle of the hypothenar muscles and where you no longer see them, there's an edge, a leading edge, and that's where you'll find the deep motor branch and it's around the region of the hook of the hamate. That's why it's good to just mark that hook of the hamate. You see the hypothenar fascia, the hypothenar muscle, and then you don't. It stops. It's that leading edge that will lead you to the deep motor branch in the vicinity of the hook of the hamate. Just put your scissors gently under that leading edge and divide everything above and then you'll start to see the deep motor branch. So this is a little tricky because you usually will have to decompress the nerve before you actually see the deep motor branch nerve. I like to release the hypothenar muscles on their most radial attachment. So I'm staying right on that hook and I'm starting to see the deep motor branch coming up. There's usually fibrous bands even within the muscle so you want to take this dissection all the way around to the flexor profundus tendon to the small finger. 
There's no problem disinserting this muscle. It just finds its new position very comfortably. And this allows you to decompress that deep motor branch all the way around the hand over towards the flexor tendon. Look at the hamate. And now we're starting to see the deep motor branch be visualized. Take this dissection just as slow as you want. And one of the things about seeing this video play out in its full version is you can see it takes a while to get that decompression done. Now take a look at that. Isn't that awesome? Look at that deep motor branch. I love that view. There's the deep motor branch, completely decompressed all the way around to the flexor tendon. Above the sensory, below the motor. Above sensory, below motor. Now we're going to move over to the carpal tunnel. This is pretty straightforward when you have this incision already done. I look distally for what I call the V. This is my distal landmark. And it's the juncture or the V between the hypothenar muscle tendons and the thenar muscle tendons. So you can see the fibers going in one direction and another direction making a nice V. And that's where I head when I'm making my release. So I'll see that V distally and I'll make my release in that direction. I like to stay, as you can see, ulnar on the flexor retinaculum. So I'm dividing the flexor retinaculum in its ulnar most location. This makes sure that the median nerve does not heal attached to the overlying division of the flexor retinaculum. I think this is the cause of recurrent carpal tunnel years after successful carpal tunnel release. It just gets stuck up to that overlying flexor retinaculum. So it's released here to the V and the median nerve will be way over there. I like this picture too. I think this is what Dr. Amadio talks about as an etiology for carpal tunnel, that sticky, tendinous tissue that sticks around the median nerve. I'm loosening that up. Uh, this will allow the nerve to glide freely, but I don't do a neurolysis of any kind on a primary carpal tunnel. So you can see my median nerve is well away from where I've cut that flexor retinaculum. And as you can see, my incision is well ulnar, and I can get both nerve res nerves released through the same incision. Now I'm going to get to the end of the table so that I can visualize exactly up the forearm and under direct vision release the antibrachial fascia where it's compressing the median nerve. So I go to the end of the table to do that.